السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على الله What does a Muslim alpha man mean? Well, it means a lot actually. And a lot of you have been asking me, we keep talking about this Muslim alpha man, what is it? Tell us already. So basically, this is the man that's in line with the fitra that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created him to be on. He is the one that was chosen to be, Allah says in the Jalil al Khalifa, he's supposed to be representative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of his hidayah, his, his revelation and guidance on earth. He is the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered the angels to bow down to because of his knowledge, because of his submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one that fulfills his duty on earth. He is the one that's been placed by Allah with responsibility over everyone else. He is, as the Prophet said, all of you, kullukum ra'i, every one of you is a shepherd and every shepherd it will be questioned and he is responsible for his flock and every shepherd it will be questioned and he is responsible for his flock but you see the flock has to follow the shepherd and if the shepherd is not qualified and doesn't understand what he's supposed to do what does it mean to be a real rajul a real you know man rijal then of course in line with the sunnah of the process and in line with revelation not what Dr. Phil says, or what Steve Harvey says, or what any one of you know, what Oprah says, no. What the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, today is very easy to just say, well, we pick and choose. But Allah says, أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْدِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْدِ And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, تَرَكْتُ فِيكُمْ لَإِن تَمَسَّكْتُمْ بِهِ بِهِمَا لَن تَذِلُّ بَعْدِ عَبَدًا وَكَمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَالسُنَّةِ I left for you two things. If you hold on to it, you'll never go straight. The Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the example, which contextualizes. People don't have the ability to just say, yeah, well, brother, there's so many interpretations. No, a real understanding of Islam goes to the basics. We're talking about basics. I'm not talking here about, you know, something complicated in fiqh uh, that requires, you know, ishtihad in banking or something like that or in business. I'm talking here about fitra males men have to return back to their fitra and when they do that that's when they will fix the other problems because if you don't have your foundation fixed then how are you going to be able to tackle all the other issues this is a basic that should be like breathing but we don't have it because we lost it and the enemies of Islam know well that if they destroy that fitra if they destroy that real manhood then we have nothing we have nothing and we become very weak. So, they asked me, what is this? Well, in line, if I were to summarize, what does manhood mean based on the Quran and the Sunnah? Okay, we start with number one. A real man puts revelation, puts the qala la qala rasul, the authentic before anyone. And he doesn't care if his, sorry, his wife is not happy, or if his uh, children are not happy, and if his all the other people in the world are not happy. As the Prophet Sallallahu said after Ta'if, he said, it doesn't matter if the whole world is angry with me, as long as you, O Allah, are pleased with me, right? So it's not about not making them happy as in not, you know, fulfilling your rights and all their rights and your duties, no. It's about not pleasing people and their desires over pleasing Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. And this is a huge thing that's happening today. We see it everywhere. Men. You know, to start, so you put Allah first and His Prophet وسلم, and His example, right? That's number one. Number two, courage. You have to be brave. The Prophet وسلم, the Sahaba were people who were brave, okay? They were not cowards. So that has to be done. It has to be encouraged through martial arts, through learning how to ride horses, doing the sunnah of archery, of um, wrestling, of swimming and all the other things that are so important and to put yourself in those situations where you can test your bravery and you can get out of the comfort zone. Another thing that men have to do, and this is a huge issue in the Ummah, men have to stop being afraid of their wives. I know people here are gonna be a bit upset by what I say, but the Prophet said there'll come a time when men will obey their wives and disobey their mothers. 
men these days are afraid of their wives because their wives will start nagging and you know they want peace. So many brothers I heard, brother you have to obey your wife. SubhanAllah. So it's been twisted now. Actually the woman is supposed to obey the man, the real man who follows Allah SWT but now it is said that no men should obey their wives. I mean this is ludicrous. I'm not talking here about not being a gentleman. I'm not talking about not being good. I'm not talking about being a prick. I'm talking here about doing it right and that sorry but if a man is gonna obey his wife's whims and desires well um, yeah we can read a lot of ahadith about that and I know the sisters will be upset but then again I leave it up to that I mean if they don't want to believe it if it's authentic if it's established over centuries and now they want to reinterpret it well go ahead and do it do what you want but you're not gonna be able to 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 avoid the obvious yeah, I know, it'll be male chauvinist and there'll be all kinds of terms used, all kinds of slogans. In the end of the day, it is quite clear as to what happened in the future, in the past and what's happening today. So, you know, sisters can be upset, but what the Prophet said is very clear. What he did, yes, he treated his wife's kind, but he also was quite strong. When they requested certain things, they were unreasonable. And he gave him the option, hey, I can divorce all of you or you can follow Allah and His Messenger and be satisfied with what you have because I'm not asking you to do something wrong. So that's something very, very important that women have to understand. And I can quote so many other evidences, but of course, uh, women will not like that. Because again, We choose, pick and choose. If it fits us, if it fits the, the 21st century agenda, which is in line with an agenda that's totally incorrect, then we Okay, yeah, we pray, we fast, everything's fine, but then what? Right? So, a real Muslim al does not, does not uh, submit to his wife, I'm sorry. His wife will submit to him because he's righteous, because he follows Allah and his messenger, because he fulfills his duties, but he's strong and firm in making the decisions that he has to make. Women are asking me, okay, fine, but where are those men? We want to submit, but we cannot submit. That's exactly, I agree with that. Where are those men? That's what we're trying to do here to explain to you what is a Muslim alpha men. And how do we groom one? How do we nurture one? Based on the Quran and Sunnah. Who was Omar? Who was Khalid? Who was Ali? Who were these Sahaba and how? What did they do? So again, this is very, very important to understand. So you put Allah first, courage, okay? You do not submit to your wife and her whims and desires. That does not mean you don't make shura with her sometimes. But the Prophet made shura sometimes with his wife, yet sometimes he took the decisions. And most of the time, actually, the Prophet would make shura with the Sahaba, not with his wives. We love to always cite the exceptions. Oh yeah, there was a warrior woman, and she was in the battlefield, uh, Nuseiba, right? Or I cannot remember, or Umhani, or Sumia, Nuseiba, yes. May Allah forgive me if I'm getting wrong. And then we love to quote that. And then, yes, the Prophet uh, I think he made shura with Um Salama. And, oh my God, we love to quote that. But we always quote the exception. The Prophet would make shura with the Sahaba, with the men, okay? Women were playing in their position and they were proud of that. And they were so proud of it to nurture human souls and to raise the next generation understanding and saying, hey, look at your father, look at that man, look at the Prophet, those are real men. That's who you're gonna be like. You know, not to dumb them down and make them suffer like, like, like girls. Because girls have been created this way and men this way. As Allah says in the Quran. And the more we go against that, the more destruction will come upon us by our own hands. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from His punishment. So, brothers and sisters, what is a real Muslim alpha, alpha male? I just given you three uh, traits of this person. The fourth one and final for now, for today, because we have a lot more uh, and that's going to come in the course that we're going to offer in the lectures in the future, inshallah. But the last one that I'm going to give you today is this man is a responsible, strong, focused. He's not a flip flopper. He's not someone who doubts himself. He might make mistakes, but he does not doubt Allah. He does not doubt his messenger. He does not doubt what he does based on his studies, his knowledge that he has to, of course, acquire. But he goes, he takes a decision. He's firm. He is strong in his decisions. Yet he is soft, of course, in his approach to people. But sometimes he needs to be firm. Firmness is a trait, a characteristic 
Yes, the prophets were very humble, very soft, very nice, accommodating. But we all know, don't take things out of context. When the Prophet Sallallahu things went down, he was strong. So this is a Muslim alpha man. Assalamu alaikum.